Welcome to Greatest Golfer. I'm Todd Franco, Greatest Guru. Thrilled to have you guys today. Thrilled to have our guest today. Awesome feat coming out of Hermitage, Pennsylvania, and just uh, excited to talk about this. Two years, state champions on a 49 and one record since 2018. Two state runner ups, one third place, three district titles. I'm losing my breath as I say this, and I'm just going <laughs> to stop and say, Coach Antish. Welcome to Greatest Golfer. Thanks a lot for having me. Looking forward to the conversation. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's been well earned. And because of the specialness and what you've all pulled off, thrilled to have as a special co-host, uh, a, a face and a name you're familiar with, uh, Kate, Kate Brown. Kate, welcome. Thanks for having me, Todd. Well, glad to have you. And I guess also glad to have had you as one of our great interns of Greatest Golfer this summer, but a great intern that came to us by, by way of Coach. Coach, you served us up Kate Brown, and we appreciate that. Glad she's on board with you. What's your memory of having Kate Brown on the team? Uh, pretty determined, um, great leadership, and, uh, you know, I had good ability, good talents, and, you know, as I kept, when I try to do this with most of the girls, but just trying to make them realize that uh, they are better than what they may seem, you know, the confidence level. Uh, there's a lot of times where kids like to doubt themselves and I try my best to not let that happen during Kate's career. There, there were some frustrating moments, which, you know, I mean, as a 15 and 16 year old student athlete, uh, that's, you know, it's, commonplace and you know even when you get into your 20s and 30s as a professional athlete um you know it can happen but uh you know for the most part she had her doubts at one point i think about going to college and so forth it was probably just the anxiety but you know made the commitment with a little push but uh you know here she is you know finishing up for what fourth year of school right yep yeah and uh I'm really proud and glad that, uh, you know, that's taken place. You guys, uh, Hickory Girls, second state championship in a row, uh, double A Pennsylvania, one going away with it. Why don't you, why don't you give us the headline of this week and what, and what the girls achieved and, and who are the girls? Talk to us. Um, I think dominating adversity would be uh, the phrase because the weather – all three days was atrocious out there. Uh, Monday for uh, individuals with uh, Sasha Petrochko and Luciana Masters, it was just ridiculously windy, gusty, and, and so forth. And they got through that round. Then uh, Tuesday, it was cold, damp, not as windy, but overcast and pretty much just a miserable day. And as I told a couple of the PIAA officials, I don't even hunt in that kind of weather. And we're out there playing five, you know, five hours of golf and so forth. And, you know, for Sasha to finish third and then uh, Lucci to finish uh, tied for seventh, that was extremely remarkable. And then when Wednesday came, that's when I really noticed our girls' uh, mindset compared to the other girls uh, in the field, where after about 10, 11 holes, you could just start seeing the uh, quit and uh, who we were playing against. Anyway, it was the uh, rain and wet snow mix with wind. And what does Sasha do? She goes out and birdies the first two holes, wow. in, you know, in that uh, stuff. Let's get the rest of the roster before we get into more of the details. You got, you got Sash, you got Luch, Ava. Ava Liberti. Yeah. yeah. And uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Ava didn't make individuals. And to me, I felt she was on a mission to prove that she should have been there uh, as far as an at-large bid. But uh, she improved her uh round from last year at states by seven strokes and finished with uh with an 80 so we went 78 78 and 80 and then uh the other two girls uh number four ava miklos and then number five is madeline myers and 
both of them are sophomores along with uh, uh, Lucci. So we have three sophomores and two juniors playing. Do they have the top three guys, 39, 39, 39? First nine? Yeah, after nine. Yeah. Uh, oh, that was cool. Yeah, after the front nine. Yeah. I think too, Kate, that uh, we had it set up for our practice rounds, that we had our practice rounds at nine in the morning. Basically okay. when elements in the morning are cold, uh, wet and so forth. But obviously when we had our practice rounds, we didn't have the snow and wind and, you know, and the rain, but still just having to get up at, you know, seven o'clock in the morning, and, you know, get around, get prepared and, and then go out and do our, uh, uh, round. And talk about the wind. You guys just didn't win. It was a phenomenal showing, not just within your division, but you also would have won the higher division had you played against those teams as well. Triple A, yeah. Yeah. Um, again, I mean, one, very fortunate with talent to begin with, but again, just the mindset that each girl uh, had. Kate, my question to you as you hear all this and knowing that you were part of it going back to 2019, what do you think of the team's accomplishments the last two years and being part of this legacy? I think it's awesome. I think when I was there, we were my junior, senior year, we knew we were getting good. Uh, we weren't great. We weren't the best, but we were definitely getting more focused and going after that title. I think we got third my senior year. So we yeah. knew we, we yeah. were getting there. We had it. I knew as soon as I left, there was more girls coming up. I was like, oh, they're going to get it. They're going to get it next year or the year after. And they did. And they got, got it twice. And it's awesome. It's cool to come from Hickory and kind of be a part of it. Coach, what, what is it about the um, the Hickory setup and what's going on in Hermitage? What do you credit um, the ability to go essentially two state champions, two second places, a third place? And it sounds like you're we're going to be having this chat next year and the year after. So what's, what's going on that you give credit to? I think we're real fortunate in our uh, area for the first T program. Um, during one of our, well, a couple of our days of uh, practicing out at the fuel driving range, we go there now since uh, Tam sold their driving range to uh, FedEx. And uh, the Buell program with the little kids already having first tee practices. I mean, these are probably first, second, and third graders that are coming out. Uh, also, being fortunate to have uh, people like Bob Collins and then you also had uh, Ari uh, Papadopoulos and John Kearns giving their lessons too when they had the driving range. Okay, let's talk about the career wins. So the last five years, it's been about 49-1 and one record. And then I know when I was there, I think you had over 100 career wins and now it's got to be up to like 150, I'm sure. So talk about the competition and the competitiveness like of the team. So it's, kind of, it's the combination of our art are our kids really that good? And at times I like to think, yeah, but also um, this year we added several more invitationals and one was uh, the Mahoning Valley Invitational over at uh, Yankee Run. And I was really curious about that particular event because one, I wanted to see how good we were, but also I wanted to see how well we would play against all the Ohio schools and even uh, St. Vincent was in and I thought that was going to be our biggest competition and we beat them by I think 32 strokes. We were in the Canfield Invitational which was uh, down at Milk Creek. It was their first and uh, one of the Ohio powerhouses, uh, Dublin, they brought two teams up and actually both of those teams beat us and we, we were third in that event so we everybody else in the field we ended up beating except uh, Dublin and that was that was a very impressive uh program to watch play on you know that particular tournament I guess uh, obviously you're a baseball guy first and a baseball lifer what um what do you like about your uh complement to the golf ecosystem what do you try to bring to the uh to to your coaching style for the girls knowing what they've I mean they're well I think in one regard, um, 
I really haven't cut anybody over any of the years. I mean, I had to dismiss a couple, but that was a very rare occasion. And it's a situation where some of these kids, you know, just want an opportunity, I feel, to be included, you know, be accepted and, and uh, you know, just be around friends of theirs that, uh, you know, also uh, play the sport. Kate can definitely vouch for, you know, some of her teammates over the years. But what do you like about the difference in coaching men's and boys baseball versus girls golf? Talk to me about uh, where they're similar and talk to me about where they're different. Well, the difference is there is an incredible amount of flexibility needed coaching girls golf. I mean, you have band, you have uh, work, um, you have uh, class meetings or after school program meetings. It's just, and then you have footballs on football on Fridays where boys baseball show up or your scholarship's done. I remember band and a uh, flag line and stuff was always Oh, I gotta go to practice. I got to go to flag line practice instead of golf. I'm, I'm a state champ. Like I'm sure yeah. they're like, or, you know, well, here, here was the biggest one that continues today uh, is uh, homecomings. Like, good Lord. Oh, <laughs> I went to districts and then, and then went to homecoming the same day. I'm curious. Um, I'm thinking back to LeBron and his high school success in St. Vincent, St. Mary, you almost have the, St. Vincent, St. Mary of Pennsylvania High School girls golf. And I like the way you described about bring, going against some Dublin teams and such. You got your whole roster coming back next year yeah. and with back-to-back -back titles already in the books. What do, you, what do you think about next year in terms of maintaining the appetite, maintaining the challenge, and finding different things for them to kind of push their resume even further? Um. Looking forward to it, very optimistic about it, obviously. And, uh, you know, just, it's also a case though, Todd, where you know how high school athletics uh, is. It's a cycle with us having that pipeline of girls coming in. I think the younger girls, cause this year we had two freshmen and I feel that uh, they were kind of uh, starstruck with the, uh, you know, with the other girl, the older girls, Sasha, you know, Luciana and uh, Ava Liberti, and they were very quiet. They, they, I think they were kind of scared to death to do anything wrong because for fear of what those three would, uh, would do, you know, as far as putting them in their place. And, but they progressed throughout the season. They, they watched and paid attention to, you know, how these girls would, would practice so since you brought up glory days of the past i'd, let, I'd like to go here if, if you're okay can, can you see my yeah, screen sure. <laughs> so, so this was the squad kate kate this is your senior year and you yeah, guys that was the in the state so we're looking at uh, leah kira right yeah and kate and mackenzie yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What, do you, what do you remember about this year kate that was the, that was probably the year that we were, we were getting good, but we weren't great. And it's a good year, <laughs> my last year. So I want to go out with a bang, but. Coach, yeah. coach, this is the team that got the wave going. What's your, what's your memory? Uh, very competitive, very athletic. That was one big thing. Um, great teammates amongst each other. Uh, you know, just, uh, real fortunate uh, with that group. And for the most part, over most of my years, Todd, just having a team full of very good teammates. Well, let me jump on one thing that you said uh, and ask both of you. During this season, and Kate or Coach, one of you first, talk to me about the event that happened. It came up in discussion in prep yesterday, getting ready for the call. Something about a great discussion on the team van after Mercyhurst. It wasn't a nice conversation. It was more a frustrated conversation. I don't remember exactly, but 
you want to explain it? Yeah, I'll explain it. Number one, I'm, I never liked Mercy Hurst. <laughs> and, and, I, and I felt that this group was finally going to be able to uh, knock them off. And uh, we ended up coming up short and kind of let my uh, Hungarian blood uh, take over. And I didn't say, I'm pretty sure I didn't say a darn thing. Silence. I, I just, yeah, I got in the van and, uh, <laughs> you know, pulled out and, and so forth. And we're getting ready to uh, leave the parking lot and get on to the main uh, road going into Meadville. And all of a sudden, <laughs> Kate, Kate yelled out, aren't you going to say anything? <laughs> Man, I hit, the, I hit the brakes real hard again. I I can't remember what I said, but I uh, I was I I mean, yeah. I had I had my moments. I had my moment, and uh, and then what, Kate? About three or four hours later, after we got back and so forth, she called, and you know, it's it's pretty much like a a, a dad daughter type thing or a brother sister type thing that it literally ends it, it's over and uh you know we laugh about it now but man we we could have locked horns pretty easily if uh if there was nobody else in the van <laughs> and then i saw leah benson in the rearview mirror kind of just start sinking down in her seat like uh oh I would... and then of course this is this year right yeah uh so yeah. second year in a row it was funny uh talking last year this time with Mackenzie. Uh, Mackenzie had said that um, um, what that doesn't see it changing. Mackenzie, your senior from last year, now off playing Division One at St. Franny, uh, she she was optimistic that we'd be having this conversation a year from now. Yeah, yeah, I I feel pretty good because um, I mean, as is the case, these five girls are going to get better and. I guess in some ways that's kind of scary in itself, but I mean, right now I feel, you know, Sasha, Lucci, and uh, Ava can definitely play college themselves if, uh, you know, if that's what they choose to do in the future. And that's probably in some ways I'm more proud of than, you know, just having trophies and plaques and so forth is the number of girls that have been fortunate to uh, move on to uh, play college golf. I think if we were, go, we were going through the stats earlier, um, in Mercer County, someone posted, Kate, that uh, only five teams in 40 years have won back-to-back -back and kind of puts girls' golf on the map, for sure. Puts Hickory, you know, of all the Hickory sports, you're it. And also what you said at the start that, you could just see that by the 10th, 11th hole, the quit that was happening in other players that didn't happen in, in your girls, it's almost like you can put these up against any athletes in Hickory or in Mercer and say these are pure athletes who can compete and they chose golf and it's great for the sport and great for the girls. Yeah. And, uh, you know, especially in the conditions that they did it, I felt that what took place last year was extremely impressive, but that happened sunny and 70 degrees and pretty much not a cloud in the sky, but what took place Wednesday with all the elements, I felt now that's, that's even more impressive to, you know, have all three girls finish uh, under double digit. Well, congrats for what you've been able to build there. Um, proud to have had a side seat through greatest golfer to kind of watch the girls and watch the team. And uh, yeah, and eager to see where, where you guys go next. It's just been uh, fascinating to watch. So um, thank you for uh, doing Thank you for delivering uh, Kate Brown, the greatest golfer. That's been awesome as well. And Kate, congrats to you for being part of the start of a, a really awesome sports legacy uh, in the, in the two valleys. Well, we're back to back. Now you guys got to be back to back to back and then more. Plan on it. Yeah. <laughs>